Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here, this time to talk about the Month of Mythic that has seemingly played Halo 5's Warzone game mode for the month of September. For those unaware, 3 for 3 Industries announced a new rec pack at the end of August. It was for the Prophet's Bane, a Mythic power weapon. I got the alert on my phone when I was just headed down to Seattle and I was like, the hell? The pack grants the player certification for the weapon, so they get the Prophet's Bane certification, and 12 single-use recs for that weapon, and another ultra-rare or higher certification for another item. The pack was available for a limited time, however it was advertised as a part of a Month of Mythic type plan. Immediately that wording set things off, I was like, what's going on when I'm reading this tweet? Month of Mythic, what else is going to happen every week? Sure enough, it was advertised as a Month of Mythic, and as such, other packs appeared for Tartarus' Gavel, Spanker Prime, and Nornfang. There are a total of 8 mythic weapons in Halo 5. These weapons are highly coveted and regarded as the best in the game. Well, most of them. Oathsworn is not a blaze of glory, but I digress. Each pack costs 100,000 rec points or 999, and can be purchased as many times as the player wants, each time granting the person 12 of those all-powerful recs and 2 certifications if they have any left to unlock. Of course, this had and still does have the community up in arms. People screaming that Warzone is now quote pay to win and quote pay to skip. I personally don't blame them. Many people, including myself, grinded their way through Halo 5's ever-growing sandbox of wreck items, going through bronze, going through silver, and going through gold. It seemed like it took forever, but I personally unlocked all the wrecks back in January, and as such made unlocking every new wreck afterwards really easily. I was didn't have anything to buy, so I just saved up points. Ever since then, the pool has grown, making the grind even longer for some still at it, or daunting for any newcomers to Halo 5. Granted, I did pay for some wrecks. I personally chose to do that. I made the adult decision to do that with my own hard-earned money. Nobody forced me to do so, and nobody should feel forced to do so either. That's where I think microtransactions can cross the line, when they make the majority of people feel forced to buy something, or feel left behind or feel left out on something that changes the game. To a certain degree, that is. I'm not talking about a simple paint job or a skin, I'm talking about an item that functions differently, like a power weapon. The main reason why I purchased rec packs for Halo 5 was to make videos and inform and educate people on the contents of the pack, because without fail I would get tons of messages on Twitter, YouTube, Xbox, you name it, asking me questions about the pack, so why not make a video and just answer all their questions in an informative video. And in those videos, I left it to my viewers to watch them and hopefully let them come to their own decisions before buying or not buying those packs. I never said, I would never want to force somebody or mislead someone to buying those packs. I would buy the packs, tell them what's in it, what their odds were and how many packs they need to buy to get other stuff as well, and just let them see if it's worth it for themselves. Also, let's squash anyone who thinks that my opinion has been bought off. I know my subscribers are intelligent and contribute greatly to civil discussions in the Halo community, and I'm thankful that my subscriber base is like that. But there's always one outsider who shows up and makes ridiculous and slanderous comments that have zero merit. I'm not paid by 343, and if I was sponsored in any way by any company, legally I would have to disclose that, otherwise I'd be in the same situation that those pro gambling sites are in, or Machinima had to go through when they're advertising Xbox Ones. You have to disclose stuff. And if it, if it happens, then I will disclose it, and I will only accept sponsorships for things that I actually truly stand behind. So let's look at both sides of the month of Mythic Rec Packs with a level head. Halo 5 has been out for almost a year now. Most games these days are long forgotten or dead by the time they reach this point. Yet Halo 5 just had another free update. They brought Halo 5 to Windows 10, they brought Anvil's Legacy, all the content with it, and that surprises me, it was another free update. They could have stopped after they reached the end of their spring slash summer content schedule, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this graphic, but they used this and everyone just looked at it as a timeline. We didn't know if it would end right then and there at the last one with the Warzone Firefight. Of course everyone wanted, wanted more, but we didn't know if they would shift over to a paid model. Because nobody's ever done this before, especially for Halo. But they didn't stop and props to them for continuing with this free content. Now when many games get to a year old, we often see collections or game of the year versions, which is what they used to be called. These versions would include all the DLC up until that point and the game for the price of a new title or sometimes even cheaper. 
That I understand. They have to incentivize those who haven't bought the game yet and maybe are on the fence on buying the game. Like it's on their radar, but they just maybe didn't have time or didn't have the money at the time. However, Halo 5 can't quite offer a model like that. All of their DLC has been free. So what can 343 do? Well, they can help players make a dent in the now ridiculous pool that the rec system is. I love what 343 has done. The ever-growing sandbox of free items is great, however, the system isn't perfect and grows ever more daunting with every update. It's cool, but also not perfect. 343 has helped latecomers in the past. Back in the summer, they offered a recruit rec pack for $9.99. The pack contained a DMR, a loaded weapon that to many became a joke on Reddit as they claimed it never existed for the longest time because it took forever for people to unlock it. It also came with the relatively new at the time Magnum with extra mags, a rocket launcher, sniper rifle, and scorpion certifications with three single use cards for each. A simple starter pack for those late to the game. The pack was great for latecomers, it was also on sale when Halo 5 was free to play for a trial period and was also 50% off the full game was if people wanted to buy the game. So it was a perfect timing. I think Warzone Firefight was just being announced, or at least the beta, this new pack for new latecomers, the game was free for a limited amount of time, and if they wanted to buy the game and continue to play it, it was 50% off. Perfect time to hop in. Back then, I did criticize the Recruit Rec Pack, saying that they should have also offered a way to pay for it with in-game currency, the Rec Points, as it would have given new players a goal while the game was free to grind for, and give them an incentive to keep playing and to try out and get these kind of staple items that many people that have been playing since launch have. The Recruit Rec Pack was a great idea in theory, but was not executed very well. It could have been better. Now fast forward to these Month of Mythic packs. These packs offer the best of the best. I see what 3 for 3 was trying to do, but offering the best of the best isn't exactly the best thing to do. Especially considering all the grinding that people had to do to unlock everything beforehand just to increase their odds at earning these weapons. I for one still firmly believe that Warzone is not pay to win, and still remains that way. Yes, there are power weapons in the game. They do require energy to obtain. And in order to get that energy, you must earn it. You must capture and kill. The energy system also limits to how often those power weapons can be used. If you get your energy back really quickly, it's probably because you earned that energy back. And I still firmly believe that a few well-coordinated shots with a loaded weapon with some friends or even by yourself or just simple map positioning is enough to win a majority of engagements in Warzone. So I dismiss the pay to win claim for Warzone. It may feel that way, but it really isn't when you look at it. Now are these packs pay to skip? Absolutely, there is no denying that. Should 3 for 3 have selected mythic weapons? I don't necessarily think so. Yes, the game is a year old, but considering the size of the rec system, that's not a lot of time for players to unlock all the items. You know, everyone's got jobs, school, other commitments. I know I kind of do this for a hobby, so, and it was, I made it my, like a job, like a chore for me to go and earn. I set up with that goal. That was my goal. I came home every day, played for two to three hours, and grinded through the silver packs. And that's how I was able to complete the silver packs and the gold packs by January. Back then, the pool size was a lot smaller though. A lot easier then than it is now. As a potential alternative, I think it would have been wiser for 343 to release the Recruit Rec Pack, or maybe one that's similar to it, but give people the ability to buy it with Rec Points. And perhaps another more advanced Recruit Rec Pack that grants a few more higher tiered weapons at a steeper Rec Point cost. This way it gives players a goal to reach and makes that goal attainable by, by playing just a bit more than they would normally would. Don't make it absolutely ridiculous, just make them play a little bit more. Heck, if they really wanted to drive up interest, why not give players a higher chance at a mythic weapon with the more advanced pack that I suggested? Don't guarantee it, just say that there's a higher chance. Those are just two quick alternatives that come to mind. For myself, I see where 3 for 3 was coming from, but I think they missed the mark. The skies of Warzone are filled with the sounds of Nornfang silencing every high-pitched grunt scream. However, that won't last for long. It's a minor influx. Players who bought the packs only have so many single-use wrecks for those weapons. And even with the certification, they won't be earning them hand over fist when they buy gold packs. If you want an indication at the drop rate, 
It took myself six to seven months after I had everything unlocked to even obtain 20 or so of each mythic weapon. And I myself rarely use them in fear of choking under pressure and losing them and giving them to the other team. In closing, and if I somehow managed to make some sort of point on this rant, the month of Mythic Rex weren't the greatest, but in my opinion they also weren't as bad as they were made out to be. Now I know someone will comment tell me that I'm late on this topic. Sure I am. I waited till after 4 packs were over with to discuss the topic and gather my thoughts. The reason I'm making this video now is because there are 4 other Mythic weapons that I didn't do packs for, so I wouldn't be surprised if another month of Mythic would appear later on for the other four mythic weapons. Halo Combat Evolved Magnum, Oathsworn, George's Chain Gun, and Whispered Truth. There is a chance that 3 for 3 could reconsider given the rather vocal outcry from the community in response to these rec packs. I sincerely hope they do so, perhaps come back with a different tactic or a different pack altogether. I don't have the perfect solution, this type of thing is never easy. Halo 5 has handled the card system and microtransactions exceptionally well. Although, Halo 5's rec system and content delivery will always have an asterisk attached to it because of the content that was delivered post-launch. Content that many say that should have been there at the start. However, developing games will never get any easier and we have to recognize that as well. There's just only so many hours in the day and only so many people. Perhaps a 3 year cycle for Halo games isn't enough anymore, but that's a whole different topic for another video. With that, I've ranted long enough, perhaps longer than I should. I encourage you though to join the discussion in the comments, and I ask you to keep it civil and constructive. As always, thank you for listening, share your thoughts. My name is Chief Canuck, and I'll see you guys next time.